one little 14 year old boy went, all of them miss? <laughs> and I thought these Australian kids were weird, like how can you just cheer for part of a team? So I said, of course, the whole team. <laughs> I gave him a lecture on teamwork and working together and the sort of stuff Don speaks to you about and you as regional managers speak to your franchisees about and you as your franchisees speak to your teams about and they went, the reserves too? <laughs> and I went, why not? <laughs> you know, did you ever do that? You dig yourself a hole and keep digging deeper and in all innocence I had no idea what I'd said until the next morning the phone is ringing with angry mothers questioning my reality. And rightly so. And I've got to tell you that I changed my definition of that word like that. What was in it for me to change? One, my job. And two, more importantly, my self-esteem. So why then do I tell this story in relation to customer service? Because I firmly believe that exactly the same thing is in it for all of us in Australia today to change our definition of service from subservience to being useful. Our jobs are in it, our future is in it. The other thing we need to change is our notion of she'll be right, mate. She'll be right. We've got to change she'll be right, mate, to get it right, mate. And get it right, mate, first time, every time, by your customers. Let me just give you an example about the value um, cost proposition. I've worked for big business with IBM. I work for a very small business myself now. Whether you're in big business or small business, I'm not a CFO, but I know the only way you make money is you either increase your revenue or you reduce your costs. It's very, very simple. And sometimes when you can't do anything to increase the revenue, you look at the cost side of things. And after 9-11, there wasn't a lot that the airlines could do in terms of getting more butts on seats in the United States. So they were looking at what they could do in terms of reducing costs. And they called all their staff together and they said, you know, look, we, we need everyone to come up with some suggestions. And there was a young guy that was working in the, as a flight attendant. He hadn't been there very long. And how many when you fly eat your lettuce or your parsley? You know, it's this little green, gooey, gobbly bit up there at 30,000 feet. And he said, well, I'm not a big boss or nothing like that, but it, it seems when I empty the tr you know, trays into these big plastic bags that nobody eats the lettuce. So maybe we could get rid of the lettuce. The executive chef said, oh no, but we've always done it that way. Right. But they thought, no, we want to encourage employee participation, so we'll try it on a trial basis for three months just to see if it makes any difference whatsoever. They extended the three-month trial to a 12-month trial. Nobody complained. They thought it might save them and a couple thousand dollars. How much do you think that saved Delta Airlines in one year? Heaps. 1.5 million US dollars. Because let me ask you another question. Was that lettuce adding value or cost to most people's flying experience? Cost. Let me ask you another question. What's the equivalent of your lettuce? What are you doing that you've always done that's adding cost? not true value to your customers. And I'm not even talking about the food side of things. I'm talking about maybe improving some of your systems, improving some of your printing costs. What are you doing that you've always done that's the equivalent of the lettuce? What is your lettuce? What are you doing that's adding cost, not true value? And as you're thinking of that, I'd like to share with you a story that I heard at a grocery conference in New Zealand. I think it's apocryphal, but I really like the story and the message. So about a young bloke that was busy working as an apprentice in a supermarket, and he was stocking the lettuces one day. An elderly lady came by and said, excuse me, but I'd like to buy half a lettuce. I said, I'm sorry, but we don't sell half lettuces. We only sell full lettuces. She said, but it's me. I'm just on the pinch, and I don't like to waste food. Surely you could sell me half a lettuce, young man. So he bounds up to the manager's office. He said, there's a silly old duck downstairs who wants to buy half a lettuce. And just as he said that, notice she followed him up and was standing here. Whoops. And quick as a flash, she went, and this lovely lady here would like to buy the other half. <laughs> How's that for recovery? <laughs> These days, you can buy one leaf of lettuce in the supermarket, can't you? It's all clean. Does it cost more? Absolutely. But cost and time are two different things. And that's interesting that time is one of your benchmarks, because some customers are more time conscious than cost conscious. I happen to be one of those customers that's more cost conscious. And time is the champagne and caviar of today. It's the one luxury that we all want and we don't have. So anything you can do to save your customers time is truly value add. Anyway, at the end of the day, this boss calls this young man in and sits and does a song. That customer situation this morning. So what's the young bloke thinking? Because that's the only time you often hear from your boss. 
when you're in trouble. He said, no, I was impressed the way you quickly recovered on that. And I'd like to promote you to be our store manager at Thai Happy. Is anyone from Thai Happy? I know there's some people from New Zealand. Who's from New Zealand? How would you describe Thai Happy? Small. It's a tiny little dot on the map. And the young bloke went, whoa, great career progression. Store manager after a few weeks. Great. But Thai Happy, sir, nobody lives at Thai Happy except hookers and truck drivers. <laughs> His boss says, my mother lives at Thai Happy. And quick as a flash, the young bloke said, and what sort of truck would she be driving, sir? <laughs> and I put to you that you can't drive into the future if you're looking into a rear vision mirror. You've got to look forward. I'd like you to think, what's the equivalent of your lettuce? 